On this week's show, the much-anticipated first day of preseason football practice for the Georgia Southern football team. We'll see how things look and hear from head coach Tyson Summers and players as we welcome you inside the Eagles Nest. And welcome inside the Eagles Nest. I'm your host, Josh Aubrey, being joined by Mike Anthony, sports editor and Georgia Southern beat writer for the Statesboro Herald. And Mike, we've had the pictures behind us off and on throughout the summer as we anticipated the first day of preseason practice. It is upon us. Monday, they hit the field at beautifully around beautiful Eagle Creek, and we saw some sights we haven't seen in a while, which included Matt Breida being back on the field, coming back from his injury. He looked pretty good out there, of course. They don't have the full pads on as of the time we went to air today. But your thoughts on the Eagles getting back onto the field? Well, always good to ring in a a new year. You have spring practice, you have summer workouts, but that first day of fall camp, pads or not, is kind of the unofficial first day of the new season. And as you mentioned, a lot of of faces back from the spring that were held out. Breida, probably the most notable. Uh, just a little bit dinged up in the spring. You've seen what he can do the last couple of years, so no sense in uh, pushing him too hard during the spring, but he is back. He's practicing. He's ready to go. Everybody knows what they can uh, anticipate out of him. As for the rest of the offense, I know a lot of questions there. We're seeing you know, a little bit of everything, just like uh, new head coach Tyson Summers said, a little bit more of a commitment to the past, but once again, the Eagles know where they make their bread. They are the two-time defending national rushing leaders, so seeing a little bit of everything here in the first couple of days. Well, Mike, of course, an exciting time when Georgia Southern starts their preseason practice. We had a chance to talk with head coach Tyson Summers and some of the players about the opportunity to get back on the field. I think they had a good summer. I think they really had, as far as the whole cohesion piece of it, I thought they had a great summer. And uh, the work ethic that they put in showed today. Uh, obviously, uh, really excited about the way they practice in the front end and, and midway through practice back end. We need to clean some things up. We need to do a better job of communicating at the back end and being having the attention to details and finishing the way we need to. Well, those guys have been together a lot, but they haven't had the coaching staff around. A little bit different this time around. It is, and, and there's different looks. You know, obviously there's uh, there's only so many things they can really work on in the summer, and, and there's only so many things we want them to be able to. You know, so uh, part of the the run game and the option stuff that comes with that on each side of the ball is a little bit different and uh, so I think that had as much to do with it as anything. What's your game plan over the next few weeks? How are you progress? Uh, up till we'll we'll continue uh, you know to go all the way through really nine days of installation and uh, trying to make sure that we've got our whole package in by then. Uh, we'll have a scrimmage in the middle of the week next week and then we'll have another one to finish up next Saturday before we get going with our fan fest. I was excited to get back out here you know as a team you know we've been Going through summer workouts, early morning workouts, you know, just getting better. You know, it's great to be able to go out there on Eagle Creek and put it to, put it to action. A little different when you guys are out here with each other. Now you got the coaches involved. Makes it a little bit, a little bit more regimented, I guess. It does. You know, it just keeps everything in line. You know, make sure that the pace is where it needs to be. Now that we have our coaches out there, you know, we got to be more fundamentally sound because they're they're technicians, so they're looking for us to be technicians as well. Uh, you know, um, just to be able to go out there and be able to be as a team with the coaches and the players, uh, it was special for us. Uh, you know, to be honest with you, this is my last first first day of fall camp, and uh, you know, I think we, we had a really good day. It was hot, but we still worked hard, but we still got a long way to go. The difference in the spring and right now, what's your thoughts? Uh, I think Toughness wise and practice and everything, it's kind of similar right now, uh, which I think we're right now, we're just trying to get the base of our offense and trying to see what's going to work for us and what's not going to work for us. And it's also an important time to see what these freshmen that just came in, what, could, what they could do for us. Uh, some of these young guys are going to have to step up for us. And, uh, you know, it was a little tough for them today, but I think they're going to pick it up. Really good. I mean, I think everybody was itching to get back out there and play football. You know, we had a really good, you know, summer it was really rough. And I think we just want to kind of, we're ready to put the pads on in a couple of days, you know, really get after it. You guys have been able to be together a lot, but not with the coaches there. Right. A little bit different out there with the coaches and everything. Yeah, most definitely, you know, having those coaches in there, you know, getting us right and, you know, make sure we're doing the right things and all, you know, going in the right places. I think it's, you know, when we, it's good when we have the coaches out there so they can help us out. Uh, the feeling is good. A lot of juice is flowing. A lot of guys ready to get, get, get going. 
Anything in particular, the difference in spring and now, do you feel? Uh, well, you can you can feel like a lot of people know that the season is right around the corner and they're more bought into the spring. And then now that we learned our new defense and things like that, a lot of guys just decided to get on the field and play. You know, things are going great. It uh, feels great to be back out here um, since I didn't do the spring. Um, I feel like the team's doing really well. Uh, we had a, a good first day at camp, but we've got to get better. Do you feel like you're behind or you feel like you're on target right I now? Feel like, uh, I feel like um, I'm on target right now. Uh, I feel like you know, I'm doing good with the rest of the team, uh, building chemistry with them. Uh, offensive line's doing a great job and so are the quarterbacks. Health-wise, how are you feeling? Feeling great, feeling great. Well, Mike, one of the big keys for this year is going to be who emerges as the starting quarterback. Do they rotate in and out? The old theory of if you have two quarterbacks, you have no quarterbacks is out there. You have Kevin Ellison. He's had the more reps through his career. Fabian Upshaw turned things on and had a breakout performance in the GoDaddy Bowl. Let's each take a quarterback and make a case for that person to be the starter. I'll begin with you and Kevin Ellison. Well, well to begin with, I think that you will see more of that two quarterback system. The old saying usually is right, but Georgia Southern's made it work the last couple of seasons. That said, you look at Kevin Ellison and here's a guy who came in as a freshman, was expected to be third or fourth string, Injuries happen all of a sudden midway through his freshman year. He's the starting quarterback on a team that has, you know, uh, uh, aspirations of moving up to FBS. He's the guy that they uh, give the reins to to take him on that journey. He gives them that win in the swamp, leading them to a win over Florida. And ever since then, this has been kind of Kevin Ellison's team. Even if he's not the best passer of the ball, even if he's not the fastest runner with the ball in his hands, he is the unquestioned leader. He's probably the more demonstrative, outspoken guy on the field. He can get the crowd going, he gets his teammates going, and he's exactly the kind of guy you need in a huddle in these tight games. All right, now this was quite random. Neither one of us have a dog in the hunt here. but It's I'll a point-counterpoint. I'll make a case for Fabian Upshaw, and that is things didn't start out great for him in the big game. His first big game experience was the Georgia Tech game. We remember the fumble. Was it a forward pass? Was it a lateral? That's still up for debate, but Fabian seemed to struggle a little bit in the big big game opportunities. I think he is a little bit more talented as far as throwing the ball a little bit better. He runs the ball, he's a little bit faster. We saw him in the GoDaddy Bowl take his game to a new level. I believe for that reason alone, he could be the guy to beat right now. A little faster, a little better arm, I think Summers wants to throw the ball. He might go with the guy who has that skill set. And not only that, but he's proven now that he can win in a big game. Well, Mike, we had a chance to talk with both Kevin Ellison and Fabian Upshaw, as well as Tyson Summers, about how things are going at quarterback. Oh, uh, yeah, it's a bunch of us. We got eight quarterbacks as of right now. You know, it's just it's a bunch of young guys. You know, me and Fabian being the only two senior leaders in the quarterback room, you know, those. We feel like those guys are buying in, you know, we got some, some great guys, you know, like I said, they're young, they got strong arms and they can run. So, you know, we're, we're looking forward to seeing how they compete and how they want to step up to the lineup to maybe get in the lineup. But more than likely, it's going to be between the two of you. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you, you guys are both coming back. Both of you guys proved yourselves last year and you're both good friends. Does that make it difficult? Oh, uh, no, I wouldn't say that because, you know, we, each and every day we tell each other for practice. I'm going to beat you at this, and he beat you, beat me at that. You know, that's, that's just the relationship that we have. You know, like, we, like you said, we were roommates. You know, we got a real close relationship. You know, it's good to have a guy like that in your room with you. A little bit like brothers that, that might be rivals, but at the end of the day, you know. Oh, for sure. It's like big brother, little brother. You know, it, the, the roles switch every day, it seems like. You know, it's, it's great to have, like I said, it's great to have a guy like Fabian. You know, it's, Keep you on your toes, just keep everybody else on their toes as well. Uh, it definitely makes it easier. I mean, you know, we both want to see each other succeed. You know, we're both each other's cheerleaders, and no matter who's out there, you know, I think the guys believe that, you know, we have a good chance of winning the game. So, as of right now, you know, we're still both swapping our roles, and at the end of camp, we'll see who's uh, starting. A lot of people think they're very similar. I think they're very different. They both run very well, uh, and I think that that's kind of where the similarities stop. You know, two different personalities. Uh, but I'll tell you what they both have is leadership ability. And I think they both have our not just our offense, but our entire team believing them that we can win with them. Well, you said running is pretty equal. That would say to me that throwing isn't. Who's, who's a, a well, little bit ahead? Not necessarily. A lot of the intangibles come with what happens before the ball's ever snapped, you know, particularly at that position. Uh, a lot like playing linebacker, so to speak, on defense. The guys have got to be able to run the show, get us in the right look, and those kind of things. So, obviously, the passing game comes a part of it, but we expect both of them to play and play a ton. 
Well, needless to say, it's a good situation for Georgia Southern when you have two guys that you can be confident can go out there on any given Saturday or Thursday or Wednesday and win you a football game. And not only that, but these guys, even though they're in competition, they're striving to make each other better, they're also not pulling against each other in any way. These guys are roommates, friends, and probably each other's biggest cheerleader when the other one's out on the field. It's a lot like brothers is what I was uh, referencing. Three, two, one. When I had a chance to talk to them, I mentioned it's a lot like brothers. You know, you have that rivalry with each other. You want to beat the other one, but in the end of the day, you're still brothers. They're still best friends. It's a good situation for Georgia Southern to be in. Well, that'll wrap it up for this week. For Mike Anthony, I'm Josh Aubrey. We thank you for joining us and hope to see you again next week.